You could use the storage and recall functions on a graphing calculator to quickly evaluate a recursive function. The first step might be to enter in a number for a variable and store it. So I hit 0, and I'm going to store this value as a. So I hit alpha a. Now once I hit enter, right, the value a is always stored as 0, but I can perform a recursive operation on this that, of course, builds on itself. Um, one way I can do this, if I hit alpha and then a plus 1, right? And I store this as my new a value, so I hit store and then a, right? What this is going to do is add 1 to a and restore this value as a. It's going to replace the old one with the new one. And then I can expand on this process and perform operations on a. If I hit alpha, and then here I'm looking for the colon button, which is right above my decimal point right here. So I hit alpha and then the period, and see so I get a colon over here. Now what I can do, by inserting that colon, I'm inserting another operation on this one command line. So I can insert alpha a, and then hit the x squared button. So what this is saying, of course, is take a, add 1 to it, store this value as a, right, as replace the old variable value with the new one, and then square that result. So what should I get here? Well, 0 plus 1, a plus 1 is 1. That's my new a value. And then, of course, take a and square it. So I should get 1. But what happens if I do this again? Right, if I enter again? Well, I get 4. Why? Because, well, it takes this new value of 1, adds 1 to it, stores it as an a value, which is 2, and then squares that. And then I can do this again to get 9. And I can keep going with this. So I can set up a recursive pattern by assigning variables and commands in the storage and recall function. Alright, hope this helped.